Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So today we're out at the Ball Diamonds. We're gonna do a little test of the gas mask by Mira Safety. And this is a test which is gonna be applicable to any gas mask, really. I wanna see what it's like to run with a gas mask because I'm guessing that in 99% of situations, you're not just gonna be casually strolling if there's a situation that warrants a gas mask. Chances are you're probably gonna be running your ass off. Or if you have to enter a contaminated area, there may be a likelihood that you're not moving fast, but you are gonna be carrying some gear. So that's gonna cause respiratory stress. So what better way to test it out than to run around a ball diamond with Marshall for a while and you know, see how it feels. So let's get to it. All right, so how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna put the gas mask on. I'm also gonna grab my backpack, the Rush 24 backpack, just as, you know, give myself a little bit more of a challenge. Now I should say that I do do a lot of cardiovascular exercise. I run every other night, but lately in the past few months, because it's been bulking season, and uh, well, that's the excuse I use, right? But uh, I haven't been doing a lot of cardio. It's been a long winter, so, but now I'm getting back into it again. So what I'm trying to say is that if you do not do any cardiovascular exercise, this probably is gonna be a lot harder for you. So you can't really go entirely on what I'm about to demonstrate here today. All right, so the mass that we're gonna be demonstrating in this test is the Mira Safety CM-6M mask. We sell these at Canadian Preparedness. The SGA 400 series mask is an excellent mask, uh, but the thing I like about these is that they're a complete package. So they are fully CBRN certified. That's chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear. So they protect against pretty much everything. Uh, it has a built-in speech diaphragm and a, a built-in drinking straw as well. You also get a canteen with it. All right, so just to prove to you that uh, it is a tight seal. And just from having to talk through the mask, it's challenging. Now you can't hear me, and the reason why you can hear me is because of the built-in speech diaphragm. So most gas masks, if they don't have that, you're not going to be able to communicate well if you're with uh, a group. So that's something to consider. We also sell the SG400 with a built-in speech diaphragm, all accessories, it's more expensive, but this one comes with everything uh, already. So that's uh, another added bonus. I really like the wide field of view on this mask. You can pretty much see everything. If you want an excellent review of the mask, go check out the Urban Preppers review. I'll post a link in the description. With the mask, we're gonna be pairing it with the 20 year shelf life gas mask filter that they sell. This is the only gas mask filter that lasts 20 years. So it's the longest lasting gas mask filter on the market. Well, I tell you, that was challenging. It was about as challenging as I expected it to be. Maybe a little bit harder than I expected. Uh, the exhalation is very easy, but it's the inhalation that's hard, which probably makes sense. So that's gonna also depend on the filter that you're using. I was just using the 20 year filter from Mestel, but um, that's something to keep in mind is that you know, in most situations, if you got to put a gas mask on, chances are you're going to have to move. Now, in terms of the weight of the mask on my face, I didn't find that to be a big issue. Obviously, it was a little lopsided due to the filter being on the one side. 
Um, had I had another filter on it, obviously that would have increased the weight, but that would have counterbalanced it a little bit. Now I also had a dog on a leash. I had a backpack on and the weather isn't the greatest right now. It's about one degree. So, you know, I think all those things considered, I think that was a fair test. The only thing that could have been different was the varying of the terrain. There was a little bit of mud in parts of the ball diamond here, but by and large, it was fairly easy. It was fairly flat ground. Now, if there's stairs, if there's mud, if there's water, obviously, if you're carrying a firearm, if you're being shot at, all of these things are gonna make the situation much more challenging. I would say, I don't think you necessarily have to go out and do this kind of experiment and train yourself in this way. You can get the oxygen deprivation masks, which I think would simulate this experience quite well. A lot of people use them in gyms and things of that nature. But I think, you know, the one-off chance that you're gonna have to use your gas mask and be running with a bunch of gear on top of it, uh, it's probably an unlikely scenario, but you know, it very well could happen. So I think just a general focus on cardiovascular health, uh, doing some endurance training. And endurance training though, you know, running like long distances is not what's gonna prepare you for this. You're gonna want to train actual uh, high intensity cardiovascular workouts in order to prepare yourself for something like this. But uh, in terms of the mask itself, I think the mask is awesome. It's a complete package. I would strongly recommend this mask. Uh, we do sell them at CanadianPreparedness.com and it's a complete package, you know, so everything you need is there. The only thing you don't get with it is a filter. Uh, we do sell a variety of filters also, so you can check those out as well. I know Marshall was kind of like WTF. I thought we were coming out here to do some exercise. I only did four laps without the backpack and four laps with the backpack. That was enough to <laughs> tell me that it would definitely uh, be challenging to keep going. Now I could have probably kept going. I could have paced myself a bit better and I wasn't even sprinting. So I mean, if it was an all out sprint, I'd probably only make it around the ball diamond once and I'm in fairly good shape. So if you're not in good shape, you know, you can probably guess that you ain't running a hundred meters full bore with one of these masks on. And if you do make it there, you're probably gonna pass out by the time you get there. And that's not a good thing. That's another thing. If you're struggling to get oxygen uh, in one of these gas masks and you pass out and you're in a situation that's contaminated, well, obviously, you know what the end result is gonna be. It's not gonna be good. So I would strongly encourage you to up your cardio game, get out there, train while the training's good. This is just another one of those situations where fiction meets reality. And to make it even more challenging, you may be even wearing a hazmat suit. And we're gonna be selling those soon too. If I had to wear a hazmat suit, a bunch of gear on, a gas mask, under the stress of the situation on varied terrain, going upstairs with a firearm, like, you know, the worst kind of scenario you can imagine, it would be very, very challenging. So I guess I kind of just debunked, you know, the whole idea that you're just gonna you know, run for long distances with a gas mask on. I'm sure there's a video game somewhere that is perpetuating that false fantasy. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comment section. Have you tried this yourself? And what were the results? Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper L. The best way to support this YouTube channel is to support yourself by gearing up through CanadianPreparedness.com or BugOutRoll.ca. Premium quality gear at the best possible price using the incredibly secure and easy to use Shopify platform. We offer free shipping to the United States for orders over $200 USD and free shipping to Canada over $75. So support the channel by supporting yourself.